Hello and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. This week kicks off the fall campaign for the Mises Institute, and I humbly ask you to make at least a small donation in honor of this podcast using the link in the show notes. It would mean a lot to me. For every $100 donation or more, or a recurring donation of $5 or more using the link, I will send you a signed copy of my book, The Skyscraper Curse. Now this episode explains how Warren Buffett, Dave Ramsey, and John Maynard Keynes are all wrong about gold. John Maynard Keynes, of course, is the godfather of Keynesian economics, who famously called gold the barbarous relic a term he used to denigrate the gold standard and to disparage the use of gold as money. Now, specifically, he hated the constraint that the gold standard placed on government spending. If the government prints too much money that can't be redeemed in gold, then it must cut back its spending, maybe bring on a recession or depression, or simply engage in runaway price inflation in the economy. Following in Keynes's footstep, we have investment whiz kid Warren Buffett, the son of the famous investor and congressman Howard Buffett. Um, Warren Buffett has famously disparaged gold as an investment, saying that it has no yield. He otherwise has voiced no coherent political philosophy like his father. And then we have hotshot radio voice Dave Ramsey, who likewise disparaged gold as an investment, saying it's just a shiny, shiny rock with no yield and is a terrible investment. Now, of course, in this age of inflation, people like Buffett Jr. and Ramsey are rightly heralded for their calls for prudence in what otherwise is a financial landscape warped by hedonistic government policies of spending, of borrowing without limits, and printing fiat money by the trillions of dollars. I will show how these men are all wrong on the investment points and how even contradictory their views are on gold. But I must emphasize here that I am not offering any kind of investment advice here. This is just analysis and commentary on the current scene. The hatred and disparagement of gold as money and the gold standard has essentially become the standard dogma and a pillar of the modern state. Now, in complete contrast, I must say that regular people in society still instinctively see gold as an emblem of excellence uh, for the entire half century since the last vestige of the gold standard was taken away from us in 1971. After all, gold medals still represent the very best achievements. Silver medals represent the next level down. Teachers and parents still use the star system with gold stars, with gold and yellow stars representing the highest achievement. So, you know, everything from babies to high school students, gold stars are still used as an inducement to great effort and achievement. Later on in life, gifts of jewelry are used to convey our affection and admiration. Now, at first, young people might use things like friendship rings, but we all know that gifts of gold jewelry are an attempt to convey our highest level of esteem by the gift giver. And of course, when the wise men visited the baby Jesus, they brought gifts of gold, along with precious perfume medicinal compounds like frankincense and myrrh. Even marketers of companies and company products 
where there is a profit and loss directive, strive to be able to claim that their company, their product, their service is the, quote, gold standard in their industry or with their customers. Even when humans started to see the world in terms of elements, humanities took off. The Bronze Age is where we got society, culture, religion, building, science, etc. And eventually gold was found to be the rarest and most precious, even cherished, of them all. Human history is replete with gold exclamations, whether it is in terms of culture, religion, art, or even new technology, and even medicine. The greatest age of human peace and prosperity is the gold standard era of the 19th century. Now, in terms of investment comparisons, well, first of all, gold is not primarily an investment. Gold and silver are monies, the most advanced form of money for thousands of years before the age of inflation when we had a steep rise in the standard of living, we had the Industrial Revol Revolution, etc. Now, technically, gold and silver are not monies right now, but only because they were forced out of that role by the state. Gold shackles the state. Paper money unleashes it from its golden cage. Murray Rothbard explains this in, in his what has government done to our money? This is such an important work for everyone to read. And the Institute is making free copies available to all. Now, obviously, if gold and silver are money, you don't need to invest in gold and silver, as you are already keeping large percentages of your uh, net worth in cash balances, checkable deposits, savings deposits, and gold and silver denominated bonds and insurance policies. I remember as a kid, after we were taken off the gold standard, that investment advice typically recommended, say, 20% cash holdings um, with, say, half of that of your cash funds for personal use and emergency in terms of paper money and half in precious metals for reasons such as inflation protection. The rest of your net worth statement would be in investments, such as your house, stocks, bonds, real estate, etc. The cash type holdings were not considered investments, but were for emergencies, diversification, and also to take advantage of investment opportunities as you built bigger, larger cash holdings. Of course, this cuts off Warren Buffett's objections at the knees. He is, after all, the king of cash, often with mountains, billions of cash on the balance sheet of his company. Yes, cash uh, can earn a yield, which might be important to investors in his funds, but the cash yield is also subject to the inflation premium tax and all government taxes as well. Gold can underperform stock investments. No one's denying that, especially in the short run. However, when I took a look at the average closing prices of gold, the Dow Jones index, and the S&P 500 index during 1971, when we were taken off of the gold standard, and last year, 2023, uh, in dividing 2023 by 1971, it turns out gold has gone up 47 and a half times over that more than a half a century. The Dow Jones index went up only 36 times, and the S&P 500 went up only 44 times. So gold actually wins in that simple comparison. And of course, that's a simple comparison because it doesn't include reinvested dividends uh, where stocks would clearly win in the long run. It doesn't include capital gains taxes on stocks or fees 
which would hurt stocks. It doesn't include the annual safety deposit box fee, where for about $100 a year, you could rent a box in a bank to hold a very large amount of gold, as well as your important papers. Again, my points here are not matters of financial advice or that gold is the superior investment. It's just to point out that Mr. Buffett and Mr. Ramsey really don't know what they're talking about, and they have failed to look at the facts of history, really any kind of history, in voicing their opinions. In fact, I'm not even suggesting you putting all of your money into gold and silver is the greatest idea. In the past, investment advisors simply recommended that part of your cash investments be in precious metals to protect you and your long-run purchasing power, a diversification, and something to balance out your net worth statement. It also helps to build your buy and hold mentality towards savings because, you know, gold and silver come with transactions fees and difficulties. Uh, difficulties that are certainly less than real estate assets, but more difficult than your typical stocks today or just using your debit card. In the end result, John Maynard Keynes was a socialist who preferred more of an absolutist state that could do pretty much as it pleases, including unrestricted borrowing and spending. The anti-gold dogma generated by the Federal Reserve's propaganda slash research machine is intensely strong among us. Mr. Buffett and Mr. Ramsey have simply swallowed that status quo creed, hook, line, and sinker. 